you know how like you have an amazon.com and a twitter.com mm -hmm. yeah. yeah can you believe they've only gone and given us a bloody vidiotsofficial.com no way Who have, did they you say vidiotsofficial.com the internet that, people have given it to us the yeah. wizards what an honor it's not like anyone can have a web just just about anyone can have a website you gotta be like you know you gotta be a cyber professional I to get that stuff to be, peter did you did you hear what the website was called vidiotsofficial.com yeah v-i-d-i-o-t-s-o-f-f-i-c-i-a-l-c-o-m vidiotsofficial.com dot com unbelievable did you say there was a shop on there oh my god this website I don't know if has you did actually but there is everything <laughs> Wow, it's got shop and YouTube and even a contact us page. But that Ooh. shop, hold the phone. Did you say what? shop? Shop. It's back. Peter, I think you said shop. Did I say there's a shop with with new items on there? Oh. I am pogging right now, as the children say. <laughs> That's disgusting. I don't care what you do. In Not your while spare we're recording time. a podcast, Mike. Oh, sorry, I'll keep my pogging to myself. Horrible. What's available in the new shop, Michael Johnson? Oh my god, a whole host of things. We've got shirts, many shirts. All your favourites are there, and for the first time, actually, the VS One shirt T-shirt is in white. And it looks Ooh. quite snappy, actually. I like white oh. shirts. I might I'm get go over to vidiotsofficial.com forward slash shop and have a look. I'm scrolling. I'm sc Whoa, look at that. That thing looks rad. There are Whoa. stickers. Stickers. Oh. Including my favorite, I think, which is the Polyots Presents sticker. So yeah. you can yes. uh, vandalize things in your own home that you own, not other people's property. Yeah. We, we cannot encourage people to do that. No. no. No, Please keep... don't go and slap it on signage out in the streets. Definitely not. Yeah. On your visit to Buckingham Palace, don't do not do it there. That'd be a no, terrible absolutely. idea. Absolutely. Don't we... be arrested for doing that. We've got mug, mm -hmm. a hoodie, and mm -hmm. for the first time ever, we're offering a cap. Wow. It's a nice little thread job as well on the cap. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a proper job. It looks well nice. It's 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 properly stitched. It's got a buckle and a brim. It's... it's mm -hmm. <gasps> beautiful a thing of beauty so it's vidiotsofficial.com vidiotsofficial.com <laughs> oh my god is it vidiotsofficial what dot hello com com dot com it's everything is on all of the links you want to find us <coughs> on youtube uh, twitch on spotify on apple podcasts on twitter on discord on facebook it's all there all of it mm -hmm. you want to donate to pod squad it's there Actually, it's, it's, even better, if you want to donate to Pod Squad, yes. you, you can just type, it's make things way easier, podiots.com. Wow. And then it's, bam, com. as if by magic, the, the internet elves will redirect you to the lovely, lovely page you know and love, where you type in those silly names. Yeah. Yes, you can join the Pod Squad. We've got a couple of people that we need to thank for making this happen. Mm -hmm. uh, firstly, we need to thank Desi, at Desi Love for very kindly relinquishing the domains vidiotsofficial.com and podiots.com mm. and uh, Andy at Weird Design who helped us build the website I say help us who built the website <laughs> for us while we nitpicked and asked for things to be changed and fonts to be fiddled with so yeah. Uh, thanks to those two, vidiotsofficial.com is a real website. We manifested it at the start of the year it, when people asked what we wanted from video. Was that this year? I can't remember. Oh, I don't know. Sure. It might have been yeah. this year. But anyway, before the end of 2022, it's taken us four years, we have our own website. And guys, let's not uh, forget that we just did a flipping reunion live stream as well. Whoa. Wasn't it great? It's not happened yet. At it's time not, it's not happened yet. No. But thank you to everyone who very kindly donated in aid of Macmillan uh, Cancer Support. The, the the VOD will be on the YouTube channel now. It should be, anyway. Should be. Yeah, yeah. And uh, one fun thing for people who were there on the night, and this is why you've got to try and tune into these things if you can, there was a very limited edition uh, poster available for that weekend only. What, on vidiotsofficial.com? <laughs> vidiotsofficial.com. Wait, we've got a website now? Yeah, vidiot... <laughs> 
vidiotsofficial.com forward slash shop not only had a really cool limited time only for the weekend thanks for coming to the reunion stream poster but there was also a 10% discount code so you gotta make sure that you're following us on the things and you're coming along to live stuff if you can because there will be little treats like that if you little can. treats yeah. and at the end of the podcast when we're going over the links again we'll go into a bit more detail about how the shop works and how we are not as in control of it as you might think <laughs> <laughs> so don't don't bother us if your parcel doesn't show up <laughs> well, you, you should you should but also it's kind of not our fault so uh there are there are things anyway should we do a podcast now yeah, yeah let's do podcast your, your parcel will show up what we're pretty sure what i think <laughs> that's a video it's promise it'll probably sure oh we can't we can't use that as a tag like no let's just start the podcast before we your parcel in. is changing <laughs> <laughs> it's lost <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Poddy. It's the official, official. video yes. a podcast. podcast. It's a conversational podcast where we take some questions from you at home and obey the law of the three us, where everybody brings a, a thing along to, to talk, talk about. about. I'm Ben. I'm Peter. And I'm Michael. Ooh, ah, 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 ah. Come on, come on, get down <coughs> with the sniffles. Oh, oh, yeah, and sickness also works as well. Yeah, we're all feeling a bit, a bit rough this week this day this yeah. recording for various reasons uh mikey and i have like a coffee thing going on i've got um, more of a tea thing going on peter's um, got a tea thing going on because yeah. he has to be different he can't have <laughs> caf- the same caffeine as us uh but also at the time of recording peter and i have just come off a rather mammoth uh event haven't we we certainly have over at triple jump post some tat effectively still lives on in another yes. name and uh, we do an annual tat appeal, and it being annual, it means we don't get to spread the tat across several. <laughs> well, was it was it weekly back in the day? I think it might have think been. It, or it, it, yeah. it became pretty regular, didn't it? We're yeah, like, I think oh, it maybe actually, we'll do a couple of episodes a year, and then it became oh no, our whole room is filled with it boxes. It may have <laughs> just been whenever the pile got big enough, but that was almost weekly. But yeah. Uh, yeah, because we only do it annually, we end up with a massive amount and we have to record for about 10 hours to open it all, which is great, yeah. of course. Like, Thank you so much. <laughs> if there are any cross listeners, uh, I mean cross as in not, not angry, <laughs> 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 multiple uh, channel listeners of uh, Triple Jump listening to this podcast, thank you for sending your things. Um, but yeah, wow, it was a real marathon. It was, and there were so many lovely letters, and so many of them mentioned Mikey Johnson they and did. Vidiots, Aww. and how important Vidiots was to them, um, yeah. which was Aww. really lovely to read. So, mm-hmm. and a lot of Podiots mentions too, which yeah. was which was really nice. So, hello, <laughs> thanks hello. for the tat. Uh, but as a result, Peter and I feeling a little fatigued. Mikey, I imagine your work is hectic as always. Oh, you bet, you bet. But we soldier on because it's we Christmas, do. boys. Well, is it? Yeah. No, it's not Christmas. Well. It's next Christina. week, next week, next episode will be our Christmas episode. So we'll let you know at the time. But if you want to prepare some Christmas questions for us, uh, make sure you send them in when we ask for them before that recording. And then as per usual, we'll probably take a, a few weeks off over the Christmas and New Year's. And then we'll be back fresh in 2023. Mm. Ready for the what happened on videos five years ago. Oh, oh God, half a decade. Oh, that is. Oh, don't, don't say it like what that. The fuck. <laughs> What the fuck, man? Uh, before we get stuck in, though, to the questions and the things, did you know that if you go to podiots.com and donate three pounds or more, you get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the show and you join Pod Squad? Did you know that? Yeah. Wow, podiots.com will take you right there. It's incredible. It's flipping amazing. Oh, Mikey. Fuck. Yeah. I believe you have the first group, but also can I very quickly check that there was there was a donation on there that said, this is Mikey, please ignore. Was that you? <laughs> that was me. That was me doing okay, tests. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> That's fine. I wanted to make sure. Okay, Mikey, take it away. Billy Ray's Five Forgotten Kids. Steven scored as, fuck, I did them all backwards. And bad joke. Okay, this is now an expensive. Lol. JK, I wasn't really generous like a glove. The very generous. Should I, do, <laughs> should I do that in the proper order for this poor person who spent a lot of money and fucked it up? <laughs> I think it goes all the way down to the next one. Are you... Oh, my God. The Oh, my God. You see? Oh, wait. The... 
or it, the very no, generous i think is the first one yeah yeah, yeah that's, that's what that's as far as we got the oh, okay generous. sorry <laughs> so in the correct order this time the very generous like a glove lol jk i wasn't really generous okay this is now an expensive and bad joke Fuck, I did them all backwards. Don't worry, we got you back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ironically, in total, you were two pounds shy of being very generous by doing that. (laughs) And they weren't the only person to do that this week. Uh, Oh, wrong order. (laughs) To be fair, I still don't really understand how the ordering works, so it's it's okay. We'll we'll get that together. We continue with Merry Lord Brohohotovich, Freddie Weber doing... Caroline keeps me in her loft. <laughs> you know, it's all about Dakum and Donak 07. We've also got Mikey's sad, soiled body bits. <laughs> <laughs> Tasty. Uh, Big Joe Rivers, who was very generous and said, Hey boys, long time listener, but first time generous donator. Just wanted to tell you guys that I've slowly been changing every computer wallpaper at my job to pictures of Dave Benson Phillips <laughs> for the last two months. Seemingly, no one in America knows Dave. Oh, <laughs> well, some Red people word. do, but they're all listeners to Podiots. Yeah, uh, we've also got Veronica Mingle Gurgle. No. Oh, sorry, Minge Gurgle. Oh. <laughs> worse than I thought. It Veronica Minge Gurgle. <laughs> Lick my sneaky Finch forty-two titties. Oh, um, Mister Blobby's hot knobby. Mm. Shit is beans time. <laughs> Um, the plop story was a bit much. Yeah. Mikey's landlord here. Why? Oh, no. <laughs> Unleashed the beans, who was also very generous, and said, Ahoy, lads. Soon I'll be moving back home to Australia after four, uh, so after eight years in the UK. So that's as good a reason as any to throw some cash your way for being such a great soundtrack to my bus slash train rides. Kiss, kiss. Kiss, kiss. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Uh, and lastly from my group are The Gimp Inside My Attic, Elon Bankrupts Podiots, and Elon Reinstates Memory Cards. Nice. So that's two of three. I could have really separated them off, but for some reason I didn't. Uh, it was supposed to be, this is the start of my my run now, Elon buys Podiots and then... Elon reinstates memory cards, Elon bankrupts Podiots. Uh, so yeah, there we are. Okay. Thank you for those. Uh, we've also got Ben out of 10, bit of an abrasive one, 2nd December Coles orgy, <laughs> Amy the Wicks, <laughs> lonely and trans at Christmas. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh. Oh. Hope you find someone. Ben Potter is Cooper Cup. Don't know that what that is. Yeah. Mr. Macca, anxious millennial cowboy, Mr. Street View at Meat Facery. <laughs> uh, Lewis Puis is Jewish. Lewis Puis is Jewish. And Osama Bin Ladas. Thank nice. you very much. I've That's got I've, hot squad. I, I've got Cooper Cup here, and my God, what a what a chill! Oh, man. okay. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> are it's are you surprised? A, it's another it's blonde a, man with a, a beard. Blonde man with a beard. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> That's him. Uh, so thank you very much. That's your pod squad for this week. Podiots Three pounds or more to get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the show. Peter, I think you have questions. Uh, yeah, question number one is uh, which name was your favourite? Oh God. Oh, you go Jeez. first, Ben. You, you you end up going last because you asked the question. So, what was um, your favourite? How about do 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 do? Oh, where it was one of Peter's, I think. Let me see. Mikey's sad soiled body bits. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I I just like all of the. I like to have my 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 bowel movements immortalised in donations. So they're all they're all good donations. I think. Yeah. They are. <laughs> oh, beautiful. So I do have some questions here submitted by you guys on Twitter um, at Vidiots Official on Twitter. Uh, so the first one comes from Paul at Paul Zaremba sixteen, who asks, and this might be one we've had before. I couldn't really remember, but if if we have, it must have been long ago enough that I'm not sure. So Paul asks, do you have a chore that you don't mind doing, or one that you despise? I never minded doing the dishes, either by hand or using the dishwasher, but doing the laundry is impossible. Never understood it. Someone wash and dry my clothes and I'll just fold them myself. K, okay, love you, bye. Uh, thank you, Paul. I don't like ironing. Um, oh, in fact, we, had this, 
I'll tell you why, why it sounds th- flipping familiar, Ben, because we had this today <laughs> when we recorded we, the we triple did, jump. Really? We did answer a very similar question today. Sort on of, triple yeah. Jump. I suddenly realised this is the second time I've complained about ironing today. We were Why? asked if if we could gamify a chore and make it uh. easier. So I said I'd do fruit ninja ironing, where you just sort of do a single swoosh through your t-shirt or whatever. And if you line up some targets, then it is suddenly crease-free. Um, but yeah, I don't like ironing. Why do you I I've I haven't ironed in like five years. Mm. Yeah. You you don't have to do it. No. <laughs> I bought a mini ironing board for Peter's wedding because I needed to iron my shirt. <laughs> to be fair, yeah, that was actually that was it before Peter's wedding. I looked at my crinkled shirt and I was like, Oh, I can't do I can't do anything about this. So I had to hang it up in the shower for like half an hour and let this that steam um air it out. Maybe I'd, do I'd, have, I'd have taken you guys as creasy as you came. Don't worry. Oh, oh that's very sweet. <laughs> um, God, a job that I hate. I, I lived alone for the longest time. So I just, I had to do everything myself, which was mm. fine. I'm trying to think if there was a part of it that I disliked more than others. I don't mind washing up. Yeah, I I def- wa- I, mm. Washing up is my favorite. I think that's, that's my go-to kind of like. Yeah, I'm all right with washing up. It feels uh, good. I don't know. It's just like it's good. Yeah. Just progress. It's like oh, there's one done. Bam. Oh, another one. Look at this Especially one doing such good washing. Your own crockery. I don't like washing other people's stuff up so much. Oh mm. no. Uh, well, how about then favorite chore? Maybe washing up and then least favorite. Because I'll actually do the washing up before I eat. Like I'll I'll cook things Whoa. and then I'll just put it to one side and then I'll wash up quickly and then I'll eat. Hmm. Uh, because I love washing up so much. <laughs> it brings me more you joy than the food. Wait. That's um, the best bit of cooking is the washing up. <laughs> you just make the, as much of a mess as possible. I yeah, ooh, ooh, a little treat for me. Uh, I think the thing I dislike the most, just because it's so physically intensive and I often don't see the results that I want, is cleaning the bath slash shower. Oh, it's so That's nice. such a pain in the ass. That's like a two or three times a year job, if that. <laughs> And there's visible grime, so Mm -hmm. I guess it's time. I just spray it with chemicals usually, so the nooks and crannies get clean because they all get melted away. But everything else, like all the tiles, I just can't be arsed. I don't have to scrub every angle of the tub. It's white. It's difficult to see where it's grimy without (laughs) caressing it. I always feel like a proper caveman when I'm doing the shower because you... (laughs) God, it is TMI. I usually do it naked so that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, you, yeah. You clean the shower I, yeah. and then you run the fours shower. naked, yeah. just <laughs> scrubbing, and your dangly bits just going. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Fucking Trying terrible. Well, that was TMI. Nah. <laughs> nah. Uh, we've all been there. It's happened. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's only human. It's just terrible. <laughs> I, uh, I've discovered a new dislike for hoovering, which, I mean, I was never a huge fan of but I never it wasn't a particular dislike it was just a chore but we've now got a hoover that is real well so I until recently I thought it was really heavy but I used it uh, the other day and I realised no it's just got it's that good a hoover that it's (laughs) sucking itself to the floor and feels heavy it's like difficult to push around because it's like no it's like a fucking limpet it just won't move um so, I mean, it's a good hoover. It definitely sucks everything up, which is great, but it's just difficult to move around the house with it. <laughs> I think my least favourite is dusting myself. Oh, yeah. What's the point? <laughs> you can do you can do a quick dust, but to, like, properly dust, you've got to pick everything up, and I've got yeah. so many... Nick- like, I've got Lego men sat around, so that's like... that's got They've all got to be picked up. It's, oh, ugh. it's terrible. Yeah, it, as, as you say, Peter, it'd be fine if it didn't just... If it didn't all come back in, like, two days. Well, yeah, I mean, there's that. But also, I wouldn't mind so much if there was a way to do it without... Like, when I do it, I just use a duster and maybe some polish if I'm really feeling fancy. But, you know, I'll use, like, a, a duster cloth. And then... If you do too much dusting, it just gets completely mucky. And then it's like, well, what do I do now? And you have to go and like sort of beat it off outside <laughs> and then and then clean the rag. Beating off oh. your duster and sucking too hard with your hoover. That sounds like a wonderful yeah, afternoon. Yeah, <laughs> because you can't, you can't just stick it in the sink and like wash it clean because then you've got a wet duster. I mean, yeah. I guess that would still pick up some stuff. But, you know, the nice dry... Um, whatever they're called you know the the fibery ones the very staticky ones they can be good yeah. if you keep them dry but yeah it's a tricky one mm. oh. it's a full-time job dusting and uh yeah there's probably an important 
reason for a dust existing and b uh it contributing to something but if we could just get rid of all dust what is dust no more dust no more dust well people say don't they that it's like oh did you know it's like 90 percent human skin but i don't think that's Mm. actually true um I think maybe 90% of human skin becomes dust. Maybe that's where the stat comes from, that it's like been inverted Ooh. by accident. But um, it's not all skin because, no. you know. It, more than just it's... dirt, house dust is a mix of sloughed off skin cells, hair, clothing fibers, bacteria, dust mites, bits of dead bugs and soil. Mm. Yeah, mm. soil, exactly. Delicious Gross. soil. Ugh. Okay, I'm not going to think about inhaling bed bugs and whatnot. Mm. No, it's yeah. best not to. Do you have a favourite, Mikey? Did you say your favourite? Yeah, dishwashing. Well, washing, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's true, that's, it's yeah. bit podcast time, boys. Stick, stick in some earphones, have a merry yeah, old yeah, clean yeah. and listen to a podcast. Time flies by. I mean, that's that's the key to doing anything as an adult, is you just distract yourself as much as humanly possible with mm-hmm. all your visual stimulation, and the time just whew, washes away. Yeah, I now get the metro. Uh, not that that's a chore, but I, it's a similar thing. I now get the metro early enough in the morning that there's always enough copies of the metro newspaper, and I read it on the train and as I'm walking to work, crossing busy roads, uh, just face <laughs> wow, down in the. You're newspaper. like a 1940s businessman. I am, and uh, it. I just suddenly seem to be at work. It like really makes a difference. Um, and I used to listen to podcasts, which is also you know a similar thing, but. Um, yeah, just having that distraction when you've got something tedious to do, like slowly make your way into the office, it does help a lot. So yeah, podcast when you're washing up is great. I don't think I could read and walk. I, I mean, oh. it's an art. I've, I've had to <laughs> yeah, learn how I'd, to I'd do love it. to see it. Yeah, in action. I can barely sit and read at the best of times. <laughs> well, there we go. That was a question. Thank you very much. Um, who has got a thing? Oh me, I have a thing. Ben, go. It's time for the return of not the onion, or Yay. is it the onion? Onions? Oh. Would you like an onion? Is the yes, na- is the name of the show? <laughs> Would I've you decided. Like an onion? onion <laughs> question mark. Yeah. Uh, so this is the show where I have brought some. Uh, I've got five news stories, and they're a mix, or are they, of real news stories that sound like they could be from fictional satirical news website, The Onion and perhaps actual fictional satirical news web- uh, news website, The Onion, articles. So I'm going to read you each of these headlines, and then we'll go back through them, and you have to decide whether they are real or whether they are The Onion. Okay. Lovely. Are you ready? Yes. Headline one. Bats use the same techniques as death metal singers to vocalise. <laughs> Ooh, Okay. Brighton, the most godless city in England. <laughs> That's okay, good, I yeah. like that. <laughs> Taco Bell introduces new cheesy beef dunk tank. Oh, what? What does that mean? <laughs> dog shoot dog shoots owner dead after stepping on his shotgun. Oh, okay. No. And people return to offices, productivity plunges. <laughs> What is real and what is not? First up, bats use the same techniques as death metal singers to vocalise. Sounds plausible. Yeah. I mean, oh God. What technique do death metal singers use? It's more guttural. It's throaty, isn't it? It's, yeah, <coughs> it's, yeah. It comes, it comes from the diaphragm, not, not anywhere else. I, Which I, you I... associate with deep sounds rather than the high-pitched squeaking of a bat, but then a bat is the size of your finger, so maybe yeah. even If you a scaled bat... a bat, if you scaled yeah. the bat up to human size, then it would sound like a death metal singer. Yes, oh, that'd maybe. be amazing. Why aren't there more big bat <laughs> singers? Yeah, <laughs> or tiny, tiny death metal <laughs> oh. <laughs> flying around catching moths. <laughs> I would love that. Is it real or is it the onion? Real, real. Death metal fans might have just found a new animal mascot. Some bats use the same vocal structures as death metal singers to make their unique vocalizations, a new study has found. Mm. That is real. Per CNN. Next one. Brighton is the most godless city in England. (laughs) Well, um... Brighton, um, I, I sometimes get Brighton and Blackpool mixed up culturally. I know geographically where they're different, but is Brighton the one that's got like quite a big gay scene? 
<laughs> what are you implying here, Peter? <laughs> I'm not a saying gay, therefore, godless city. Therefore, they are sinners. But what I'm saying is, it the, my, I suspect there may be some correlation, not a hundred percent, but between being gay and perhaps feeling like maybe Christianity's not for me because you know certain denominations of it say that I'm bad and I'm not. Yeah. I'm just the way that quote unquote God made me. So I I wonder whether there's a correlation between. Uh, yeah. being more atheist or agnostic if you are gay. Yeah, um, yeah. But that is Brighton, isn't it, I think? Brighton's yes, a very yes, left, right. left-leaning left city. Yeah, yeah I, I would maybe say this sounds true. Yeah, I would totally describe Brighton as godless. <laughs> more than half of the people in Brighton, 55.2%, reported having no religion, the highest proportion in England. Oh, mm. my God. So there you go, that's true. That is a real story. <laughs> Next up, Taco Bell introduces new cheesy beef dunk tank. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Is that do you get dunked in it? Yeah, dunk tank, right? <laughs> okay. Like at a fair. And it's got cheesy beef in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cheesy beef. Or oh, is it beefy cheese? That's the question. Oh, mm. yeah, well you have to get dunked to find out. Mm. I did, uh, if this is like KFC introducing a gravy dunk tank, I'd be like, yeah. That sounds really plausible. They do that kind of thing all the time. But Taco Bell, mm. that's, ta- Taco Bell's too too serious for this kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm in, I'm inclined to say this is a, an onion one. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's it's an onion as well. Oh, good good sense of smell on you two. It is Ooh. a real onion. Uh, calling its latest offering the ultimate innovation in Mexican inspired fast food, restaurant Chaco t- uh, restaurant chain Taco Bell announced Thursday that it had added a cheesy beef dunk tank to its menu. Uh, at select locations throughout the country, customers can now get their Taco Bell fix through total immersion in a 600-gallon dunk <laughs> tank filled with mouth-watering molten cheese and spicy meat. Mm, uh, molten not, cheese. Not you would really. never emerge. No. You would be dead. You would die in it. Uh, so the final news story. No, we've got two more. Uh, dog shoots owner dead after stepping on his shotgun. Mikey? I know this one. <laughs> yeah, see, this is this has happened before. I don't know if it's happened again recently, but this has definitely happened in the past. So well, I will say, say this yes. article is from the twenty eighth of November. Wow. Okay. So, well, yeah. I think it may have happened <laughs> oh again. God, how does? Wait, I mean, we don't. We haven't revealed the answer yet. We don't. But, we don't know. We, we're getting ahead of ourselves. But how? <laughs> My God. But yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm going to err on the side of real. Yeah, me too. It is real. A 32-year-old man in Turkey was reportedly shot and killed by his own dog after the canine stepped on the trigger of a shotgun and it fired at him. Osgur Gevrekoglu was killed while out hunting with his friend in the Kizlan Plateau in the Samson province of Turkey. While putting his dog into his car, the animal's paw touched the loaded weapon and the rifle fired at Gevrekoglu from a short distance. He was taken to the hospital after the incident and later pronounced dead. Yeesh. Um, Oh, okay. There is a picture of a dog, but it does say underneath, this stock image shows a dog sitting outside. Right. So it's, it's not, not It's, it's not, not the murderer. It's not a mug shot, is it? <laughs> it's not a mug shot. No, it's not. Oh, wow. The image on the thread is very good. I like that. A mug shot. Hey, nice. That is great. Uh, okay. I have got one final one here. People return to offices. Productivity plunges. I mean, all, all signs seem to point to that being true with every study i've ever seen but i never know if that's just people trying to argue for staying at home hmm. i can see I mean, how this could be although yeah like i agree statistically it, it sounds true i could also see how this might be just you could spin this into a, a funny headline in some way Ooh. Um, so i suppose we're 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 four for four aren't we mikey with each other so maybe we should go different yeah, let's split up. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say uh, onion on this occasion. I'm going to go real. Okay. It is real. Yeah. Oh! What One of the most interesting things about the pandemic, at least from an employment perspective, is that productivity didn't suffer as a result of remote work. In many cases, employees became even more productive while working from home, either because they were happier or because they were making an extra effort to impress faraway bosses. Now, word comes from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, or Labor Statistics, if you want to pronounce it American. They don't pronounce it that way, but they do spell it that way. That productivity plunged during the first half of 2022 down by the sharpest rate since the 1940s. Wow. There's a pretty good reason for that. 
Uh, so there we are. Jeez. Wow, amazing. That's a real thing. And that is Onion or Not Onion. Hmm. We what a it. wonderful collection of onions. Thank you, Ben. Indeed. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, welcome. Ben. Um, we've now got a question from Jamshed, the, at Mighty Jamshed, uh, who says, In an alternate reality, you three are brothers, biological brothers, kin, etc., etc. What was the best family trip you had? And what's the one memory you don't talk about for obvious <laughs> reasons? Oh, oh, this is interesting. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I've hey never I've ever seen you guys as like young children. I, <laughs> I always just picture it like the same as adults, but small body, big head, and that's it. Hey guys, remember that time we went to Mr. Blobby Land, Blobby World? <laughs> yeah, we had a great time together. All Loved it. Mr. Mikey then did poo into a newspaper. <sighs> yeah, remember he was, that? He was desperate and the cute to meet Mr. Blobby, and he didn't want to lose his place, so no. dropped a Mr. Jobby. <laughs> the, the... <laughs> The poo's paper, as we call it. In uh, family in joke. Rapid fire. Uh, on fire tonight. Wow. <laughs> There's got to be a third one. Come on, Mikey. Um, well, I mean, I, I, the worst bit was when Peter just started crying and crying and crying because yeah. Mr. Blobby didn't know his name, even though he no. was his biggest fan. And terrible. I, we had he, it's a whole car ride home. He just salt and salt. It's Blobby. amazing that I could tell he didn't know my name because all he ever says is Blobby, Blobby, Blobby. <laughs> he but didn't knew... know my name. <laughs> I'm not Blobby, I'm Peter. <laughs> Imagine if Blobby, if Mr. Blobby just went, hello, Peter. Blobby, 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 Blobby. <laughs> ben, Michael, <laughs> Blobby, Blobby. It'd be like that clip from that uh, from the Pokemon movie where where Pikachu talks. Yeah. For the first first and only time. Oh. Horrible. Oof. Um well I mean that I think we nailed it. That was sorry, it. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm currently in the middle of dying here. Give me sorry. There we go. No, no. I started breathing <laughs> and it got all bitty in my throat. Do oh. we have a good do we have a good memory from the day or another day for us each? Uh we all we all got a photo with Mr. Blobby at Blobby Land. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's cute. Still yeah. sitting on the uh, fireplace. The phablographer and... or something. I don't know. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I really Blob-tographer. wish Mr. Bl- I, don't know. I really wish Mr. Blobby Land was still open because it had to have been themed with puns from like top to tail. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. God, um, magical experience it would have been. Oh, Ben, my favourite bit of that trip was when you put your last 20p into that little coin operated slot machine and you gave me that 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 that, that lovely pink plastic ring that you won and i plan oh. to one day hand that down to my grandchildren oh. uh, true what is our family name actually oh, oh yeah our surname God. what's what's um oh god sorry i'm just going to write them all down what <laughs> austin and see if there's any way of smushing them jotston uh, jotston yeah it could be jotston <laughs> yeah 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 j-o-t-t-s-t-i-n that feels right. Yeah. yeah. Michael all Johnston, right. Peter yeah. Johnston, and Ben Johnston. Great. Johnston. And the day we all had out of Blobbyland oh. uh, without any parental supervision. <laughs> yeah. Cute. It was a lovely time. Thank you, everyone. The <laughs> There's, hang on. I'm looking at I'm looking at an image from Blobbyland, and oh, you yeah. said it would be covered in pl- puns everywhere. There's some sort of exhibit called Dun Blobbin. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Dun Blobbin. D U N. Blobbin. <laughs> How do you spell your name, please? Yes, it's Mr. Blobby. Let's see. Okay, I've got a map. I've oh, got my... a map of Blobby Land. Oh, Hang no on. way. Uh, it's not very high quality. I'm going to have to zoom in. There's the Blobby shop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Blob. <laughs> Mr. Blobby house. Mr. Blobby's house. Uh, Crinkly Bottom Station. Crinkly Bottom High Street. Uh, Adventure <laughs> Trail. Woodland Walks. Crinkly Bottom Art Gallery, extremely nice thingy shop. Oh, good! <laughs> it's uh, all shops. <laughs> the Lakeside Food Court, the Holy something. It's very blurry. I assume that's a mini golf course. Crinkly Bottom Airport. They've got an airport. Wow. Uh, Crinkly House, of course. The Deer Park, the Flamingos, uh, the Narnia Tunnel. Oh, there's a general store. 
Do you think they had a, a license from C.S. Lewis's estate to have the Narnia tunnel? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, there's so many sh- post office shop. Oh wow! Shopping arcade. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> literally the only thing to do here is, is shop and go to mr Bond's house things. and that's it <laughs> there are there's there's the crinkly bottom fun village the crinkly bottom uh what is that? safari ride the chinese water garden mm-hmm. crinkly bottom sea lion show advent something called adventure fort those poor sea lions. There's, Just oh imagine my God. being whisked off crinkly, to crinkly bottom. Crinkly bottom. What do you mean the sea lions? There's an entire <laughs> safari park with elephants. Oh, my God. Do you think There's the a picture sea of a zebra show- here. Do you think the Sea Lion Show is like two sea lions on stage and then just Mr. Blobby going like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make him do so. tricks. Every I day really is hope torture. So. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I'm your leopards. TV's family favourites. Oh god, there's a picture of a Dalek. There's a now. Dalek there, and oh. there's also Noddy, Noddy in I Toy think, Town, yeah. Toy Town, which is one. So. You've missed my favourite so far. Yeah, the Gunge Mines. Oh, no, <laughs> where they get it mines. from? Oh, no, is that where Dave was born? <laughs> Children working down there. Oh, they've got the an Gunge animals mines. of farthing wood woodland as well. Wow. Cute. <laughs> Trout feeding, truly a magical day. <laughs> oh, what was your favourite bit? Trout feeding. <laughs> Fed the trout. The post, the post office shop. Oh, man. Okay, this actually does look like a good day out. Wait, I mean, what the... Mean, uh-huh. Throttled uh-huh. cock farm. Excuse me. <laughs> At the top, throttled cock farm. Where? At the top. Oh, my God. Very top in, like, the oh, circle. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's not even... Yeah. <laughs> Throttled That's Cock not... Farm. What? Jesus. Do you remember when we went on the adventure trail through woodland walks and we didn't want to do trout feeding, so we crossed over Crinkly Bridge <laughs> and we went to Cricket House and then Mikey pooed in the living room. <laughs> I do. You remember uh, that? Yeah, it was good. We went to Throttled Cock Farm and got our cocks throttled. Do you get your cocks throttled at Throttled Cock Farm or do you throttle cocks? That's a good question. I think it's just a, a, a big free-for-all. There are cocks and there's throttling to be done and, uh, you know, every every cock for himself. I just, I would give so much to visit the Blobby Shop. Yeah. That's, <laughs> it's I, so oh. pink and yellow. And the shop radio is just playing the Mr. Blobby theme over and <laughs> over, over and over. <laughs> the person behind the counter has this very far away look in their eyes. Glazed over pink and yellow eyeballs. <laughs> ah, sorry, I've just found the most cursed image. <laughs> oh my God. That is found footage. What that is the fuck horrible. is that? <laughs> go, I'll put go. it into the so thread. Is, so this is a, an audio podcast. Let's describe this. Um, <laughs> it, you, you know the last shot in uh, oh, the Blair Witch, Witch Project. Project? Yeah. It's that, but with Mr. Blobby. <laughs> it's like a really dirty photograph taken on a proper film camera, probably like a disposable camera. Mr. Blobby is standing, actually facing the camera, but it's taken from so low down that his head is cropped off. He's A-posing. He's (laughs) A-posing. And there's presumably Noel Edmonds or someone in the background with a very loud shirt reading a newspaper. What does it say? It says, may cause drowsiness, I think, on the... uh, Yeah, I think it does. On the headline. Is it the crinkly bottom something? Is that the name of the newspaper? Probably, yeah. And then there's a table in the middle that has a sort of strange ornament on it. Like a yeah. golden angel holding a sword or something. I don't think it's... I think that's um, that's just the Mr. Blobby suit propped up because you can see a vertical pink pole behind the right <laughs> oh, leg. Yeah, you're right. So oh, I don't think... Does. I think it just sta- I think it just lurks in there. Yeah, it's an and ornament. And you just peer in as like, there's Mr. Blobby's house and there's just this unmoving, A-posing <laughs> pink <laughs> demon. Absolutely. Well, oh, that was God. my favourite bit of our visit. It was oh, that. Yeah, me too. I loved that bit. Yeah, when we went in that scary house. Fantastic. <laughs> Jesus. There, there's got to be more. Why are there no? Why aren't there more contemporary photos? Well, because it's been closed down, hasn't it? I think. Oh, I, f- I found a photo of the Blobby Shop. Okay. Oh. Um, <laughs> Is it, it pink? You know, it's not that exciting. Uh, it's got pink, pink aspects. Oh, it's the to outside. It. Oh, oh, it's cute. Yeah. It's cute little thatched. 
thatch style building, but definitely built in 1998. Yeah. Um, oh my goodness. So Crinkly bottom TV. haute cuisine. Oh. Ooh. If we if this place is nearby at all, can we go and do a bit of urbex and jump urbex. inside? Yeah. Yeah, it's in, in Somerset, there. so theoretically possible. That is, it, um, does it still stand this possible. day? A little bit. It might do. Honestly, if it does still stand, I bet there is already an Urbex video of it. So I'm, I'll do. Oh, a there quick are. Search. There's tons. I've got YouTube thumbnails galore right here. <laughs> oh wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, at least in Bloody 2010, it was Urbex. all still there. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Oh, it's all sort of haunting. Can we oh. go find the gunge mines? <laughs> there is actually a Mr. Blobby creepy pasta video called the Blobby Land Incident. Oh. No. oh. <laughs> I hope that cursed image we put on the thread is the thumbnail. (laughs) Oh, dear. Oh, look at this. I found another cursed image. This is from someone's thumbnail from their urbex. (laughs) Oh, no, (laughs) Blobby. It's It's just a swamp with a decapitated blobby head. Which has been bleached by the sun. It's just a pure (laughs) white blobby head, like, floating on its back in a bog. Oh, oh, I really God. want to go. I, really I think you were right go. when we, we said the sea lion show just involves a blobby screaming at oh, no, it sea doesn't. lions. It does, it does, because I've just <laughs> saw an image and it's just a, a blobby in an enclosure. <laughs> oh, what do you think of that one? Someone's, ta- uh, someone's uh, spray painted the inside of one of the blobby houses. And it says, Noel Edmonds, stop pretending deal or no deal is more than it is. <laughs> it's quite <laughs> profound for graffiti. God, this is an absolute treasure trove. Oh, that's a weirdly shaped room that that's been spray painted in. It's like being inside Mr. Blobby's head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sort of it's very cool. Oh, God, I really want to go. I want yeah. to go. Oh, should, should we all go to the next video reunion? We'll, we'll, yeah. We'll go I mean, I've got an easy jet voucher that I need to spend, and one of the only places <laughs> I can get to in the UK is uh, Bristol from Newcastle, <laughs> so I could come down in a heartbeat. Uh, I found my new favourite photo of Blobby Land. It's that one. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> so it's a, a child in one of those ride-on things where it's, you know, it's like a... There are a lot of Postman Pat ones and things used to be outside supermarkets. You put a coin in and it just rocks back and forth. And it's a boat, a, a pea green boat with a very small child-sized Blobby staring. It's, it's so child. rotund. Yeah. And it's sort of got quite low eyelids. It's like he's a bit baked, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a baked film. Oh, no, yeah. Wow. Well, there's another. I've just noticed in that photo, in the foreground, very blurred. There's a the top of a different <laughs> blobby head <laughs> because everywhere you go in Blobbyland, there's just another blobby. Blobbies. Every, you can't move for blobbies. There's a blobby <laughs> toilet. Oh, no. <laughs> A pink toilet with yellow spots. <laughs> There's so many photos of this one toilet. Yeah, it must and be we're famous. on a podcast, and it's yeah, it's a shame. But we recommend that you all get searching on YouTube and Google Images for Bobbyland. Oh God, that's a well-used lobby to- toilet. Thoroughly yeah. used. Oh dear! Right, should we should we stop <laughs> looking at pictures of a, an old abandoned theme park and move on? One yeah. final thing. Yeah. The last image that I've spotted here it's it's an article called "Mummified Remains of Mr. Blobby Found in Cupboard," and I think it's a really old Mr. Blobby costume that's like gone off. Oh no! <laughs> it's Is so it scary. Yeah, it looks like a it looks like a Russian. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Russian uh, flipping hazmat suit. It's like a gas, yeah, gas mask that's, Yeah, thing. that's what they used to get to the friend, the centre of, oh god, oh, I've forgotten the name of the nuclear disaster now. 20,000 people used to live here. Chernobyl. Yeah, that's what mm. they used to go to the elephant's foot in Chernobyl. Oh, okay, dear. right, I'm done, I'm done now. I'm done, yeah. God, <laughs> exhausting. Well, thanks for the question there, uh, Jam, Jam Shed, Jam's Head. Um, <laughs> excellent. Mikey, would you like to do your thing now, or last? I'd like to do my thing now, if you don't mind. Yeah, please. Do y'all l- believe in miracles? Of you course. sexy thing. I mean, Blobby Land exists. So that's proof miracles exist. Yeah. But if you don't believe in miracles, you will believe in them by the end of this story. I have a wonderful tale of the power of God, let's say. Oh. During the Civil War, 
this is in America. Oh, it says in the next sentence, this is America. I mean, you know it's America. What, <laughs> why am I overcomplicating this? Could have been the English Civil War, you <laughs> True, know, yeah, yeah, hundreds yeah. of years ago. <laughs> During the Civil War, the government of the United States enacted the Homestead Act of uh, 1862. Basically, it said that if, you're, if, if you'd never taken up arms against the nation, you could go farm on 160 acres of undevelopment government land. And if you worked the land for five years, it was yours to keep and do with what, whatever you pleased. So it's a pretty good deal. So obviously, in this land of hope and glory, uh, many people flocked to it and uh, to begin a new life. One of these homesteaders was a man named Frederick Paul, who settled in Beatrice, Nebraska, with his wife, and they had three children. One of those children had a little girl who, just two generations from the historic homesteading of Nebraska, is involved in our story. Ooh. Frederick's granddaughter, Marilyn Ruth Paul, was 18 years old and was the pianist at a local church, the West End Baptist Church. It was March 1st of 1950, and she decided to take a quick nap after dinner and before choir practice that night. She slept a little bit longer than she anticipated, and her mother had to wake her up only ten minutes before choir practice was about to start. She was definitely going to be late. That wouldn't have been such a big deal, except this was a pet peeve of the choir director, which just happened to be her mother, Martha. Martha. It's a good, strong name. There's no weak Marthas out there. They're all big, burly women. Yeah. Martha. Yeah, powerful. It's like all, all, all names that end in the. Bertha. Yeah. Uh, that's it. That's the that's two. That's it. Those are the Mar two ones. <laughs> that end in the. Pow powerful people. Yeah. <laughs> Martha was a stickler about punctuality. She stressed that choir practice began promptly at 7.25 p.m., in fact, she demanded it from her small 15-member choir. Choir practice didn't begin at 7.30. It began at 7.25, and you better be there. So most of the singers got into the habit of arriving there at 7.15. That Wednesday evening was a cool one. The pastor of the church left at 4.30 p.m., but before he left, Pastor William Kemple turned on the heat to the building. But somewhere in the church's heating system, there was a gas leak. Oh, Oh no. And for the next three hours, the church filled with gas. And at 7.27, which is, oh God, what, what is that? How many more minutes is that? 12, more, 12 minutes after choir practice was supposed to begin, an explosion could be heard throughout the entire town of Beatrice, Nebraska. Oh no. It shattered the windows of nearby buildings. The town radio station lost its signal. The church was flattened. The roof fell in and the walls collapsed into a pile of rubbish. An absolute tragedy. Martha Paul and her daughter Marilyn were spared. They hadn't yet made it to the church because Marilyn lap napped too long. But this is where the story gets interesting. Despite choir practice having started two minutes before the explosion, I completely screwed up my maths there. I would not be on time to choir practice. Um, <laughs> No, despite the practice, uh, oh my god, despite choir practice having started two minutes before the explosion, nobody died in the explosion because nobody was in the church. Ooh. Reverend Walter Kemple, who turned on the furnace in the first place, had left church early that day. But at 7.10, when it was time to him to go back to the church with his wife and daughter, Marilyn Ruth, it turned out that Marilyn Ruth's dress was soiled. They waited while Mrs. Klemple ironed out and ironed another and thus were still at home when it happened. Ladona Vandergrift, a high school sophomore, was having trouble with a geometry problem. She knew practice began promptly and always came earlier, but on this instance, she stayed home to finish the problem. Ooh. Rowena Estes was ready, but the car would not start. So her and her sister called their friend Ladona Vandergrift and asked her to pick them up. But Ladona was the girl with the geometry problem, and the Estes sisters had to wait. Sadie Estes' story was the same as Rowena's. All day, they'd been having trouble with the car. It just refused to start. Miss Leonard Schuster would originally have arrived at 7.20 with her small daughter Susan. But on this particular evening, Mrs. Schuster had to go to her mother's house to help her get ready for a missionary meeting. Herbert Kiff, lathe operator, would have been ahead of time, but, have put, but had put off an important letter. I can't think why, he said. He lingered over it, and as a result, was also late. 
sternographer Joyce Black, feeling, quote-unquote, just plain lazy, <laughs> stayed in her warm house until the last possible moment. She was almost ready to leave when it happened. Because his wife was away, machinist Harvey All was taking care of two boys. He was going to take them to practice with him, but somehow he got wound up talking. And when he looked at his watch, he saw and he was already late. Marilyn Paul, the pianist, had planned to arrive half an hour early. However, she fell asleep after dinner. And when her mother awakened her at 7.15, she only had time to tidy up and start out. Mrs. F.E. Paul, quiet director, the mother of the pianist, was simply late because her daughter was. She had tried unsuccessfully to awaken the girls earlier. This, uh, this sounds like a fucking chaos group of people. To- it does. No <laughs> wonder the, the person who organized it was so strict about the start time. Yeah, I'm start, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm starting to see both sides of the story here. Like, maybe she's so strict that she's put everyone off. But also, maybe she has to be strict because, oh, I don't know... Bill got occupied with had a letter passed again. and no one had showed up. Apparently. Sorry, I'm doing a geology problem. Couldn't be here on time. I just didn't want to leave. It was very warm in my house. And lastly, high school girls Lucille Jones and Dorothy Wood are neighbours and customarily went to practice together. Lucille was listening to a 7 to 7.30 radio programme and broke her habit of promptness because she wanted to hear the end and Dorothy waited for her. Uh, it was at 7.25, with a roar heard in almost every corner of the town. The West Side Baptist Church blew up, the walls fell out, the heavy wooden roof crashed straight down like a weight in a deadfall. But because of such matters as a soil dress, a cat nap, an unfinished letter, a geometry problem, and a stalled car... car no geometry. I did wonder what a geology problem was. <laughs> did I say geology? Oh, well, no. Well, you may have done. I don't know. But you certainly said I, geometry there. I did think it was geometry. Uh, what, what rock I mean. is twice as big as little rock? Mary has two rocks. One is on a train from San Francisco to New York. <laughs> And yeah, that and as a result of all these little tiny things, which a usually prompt choir practice uh, was was delayed, and therefore saved the lives of fifteen people. God, wow. bonkers! Amazing. Coincidence after coincidence. So not a single person was hurt in this explosion, which flattened the building and destroyed all nearby things. Yeah, Isn't how, that magical? That is magical. But how terrible would every single one of those person people have felt? knowing that they were late until they worked out that nobody else had died. Imagine, obviously, you know, it's great (laughs) that you're still alive, but imagine being late and everyone else dying. You'd feel pretty bad about that, I would imagine. Yeah, Yeah. sheesh. Although the way things did go, with everyone being saved, the vicar was furious because he was trying to off the whole choir. Yeah, (laughs) they're terrible. We need to start over. (laughs) They're always late to stuff. (laughs) I'll show them. (laughs) Wow, go. amazing, Mikey. Thank you That's for that. Brilliant. Thank you, Michael. Thank what you. Cool story. Um, so I've got a question here from Stuart Christ at Stucalicious, who says, what ingredients would you add to your own super smoothie? You must include one of each of the main food types. Those are, oh. apparently, veg, fruit, meat, sauce, pudding, crisps, <laughs> 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 and a hot and cold beverage. Okay. Hey, can, you, can you put those in there? Or oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll have to type them out. But um, okay. yeah, we, I think we should just do one big video. It's one together. Sure. Um, Sounds good. Yeah. Bitch. The video smoothie. Mm. Um, I'm having to tab. I've only got one monitor on my current setup. Uh, here we go. Veg, fruit, meat, sauce. Mm. Get thinking. Pudding. Pudding. Crisps. <laughs> One of the food groups and hot drink and cold drink. Uh, I'm already putting in a vote for hot drink. I want Bovril. Bovril. Okay, okay so I we're not going sweet base. then. We're not going. <laughs> well, we can't. I mean, go... we've got crisps in here. It's got veg and pudding in it. Well, so... I just, I I just need... think there's a way we. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I well... don't know what it is, but we're going. Well, I'm going to retract my Bovril, Ben, and it's over to you to make this palatable. <laughs> okay, so we're going. <laughs> We're going for a chocolate fruit. Um, <laughs> yeah. A chocolate orange, maybe. Chocolate orange. Oh, there you yeah. go. Uh, God, I don't know. Uh, what's for a meat, really... could we... I mean, are we making a vidiot smoothie here? Cause sure. We could put a, it's going to be fr- un, undigestible, right? Yeah. <laughs> Frozen meat face. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Go yeah. Oh, so it's not even cooked meat face. It's just like little shards of hard frozen meat face in there. Yeah. Well, it'll go in a blender, but yeah. True, true. Yeah. 
Um, is there a veg? Beans? Beans are... It is beans. What fine. are beans? They're a what musical fruit, actually. They are a musical fruit. Yeah, they are. They are, which are used as veg- vegetables for human or animal food. I think that counts. Whoa. Yeah, okay, okay, well, it is beans time. So that's a veg. What yeah, fruit time. should we put in? Tomato. If you want to get tomato, tomato. Yeah. That, that'll go with the beans, right? <laughs> it will go with the beans. Yeah, I'm just yeah. trying. To, I don't think there's a video. It's fruit. No. What was it? I fruit remember. of the. I swear, there's a video. It's thing that like a quote. It's the fruit of the something. Oh. Oh God. Oh, oh that's that's. I'm not I sure about that. It could be. No. I like don't, a, it doesn't ring any bells. Oh though. God. So, someone it's will be kill screaming. You, someone will be <laughs> screaming at us. What about the the fruit of the sausage plant? Yeah, or we could do um, we could do the grapes that we spat in the Spyro challenge. Scottish fruit. Scottish fruit. Remember that? Oh yeah, that rings a bell. Oh, Scotch eggs. Scottish that? fruit. Or, or something. Oh, so Scotch eggs. Is that it? Scottish fruit. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying it. Scottish just keep fruit. saying Scottish, Scottish fruit. fruit? <laughs> nothing's uh, nothing's triggering Scot- any sign up. called Scottish in my head. fruit. Scottish fruit? What it's does it Scottish mean? Fruit. I guess... don't know. <laughs> oh, what about grape coon? I've said grape coon. That's the second, yeah, my yeah, second yeah. attempt to getting grapes in. Um, sure. Yeah, let's do it. We'll do it if it's grape coon. <laughs> uh, so then for meat, we've got we've got meat face. Yeah. Sauce. Mm. Bovril. Mm. Bovril. <laughs> Very thick bovril. Then becomes a sauce. Uh, pudding. Oh, shit. <laughs> pudding. Uh, frozen ice cubes and artificial sweetener. <laughs> Good, the, actually, yeah. The sauce could be garlic. Yeah. Nice. Garlic. <gasps> garlic pudding. Sauce. We oh. could have garlic pudding if you want. <laughs> or garlic God. sauce. Yeah, either. Crisps. We had a crisp fight, right? Crisp battle. Oh, we did have a crisp fight. God. Yeah, what one? Walkers. Wait, hold Maybe. on. Let me have a... See if I did it in person. Gonna, He's walking over flick. to his filing cabinet. <laughs> He's got all the fights. His fighting cabinet. Okay, hold um, on. I can do this. I don't suppose a tuck counts as a crisp, does it? In a, in a sense, I think. <laughs> what is a tuck? What is a tuck? It's biscuit? Biscuit. It must be biscuit. Oh, cracker. Ooh, you've heard of... That's a difficult one. Mm. Oh, sadly, I don't. I don't have my my crisp <laughs> crisps at hand. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I mean, yeah, maybe talks. Mm. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd for for the for the purposes of a smoothie, I'd, I'd class them as a crisp. They're a crisp. Okay. They do Hot say beverage. biscuits, but that's. I think that's fine. Hot <laughs> beverage. Um, oh, oh God. God, what have we got? We've well, I mean, we've already great. put. I oh, know we've not put bovril in. We put garlic sauce in, haven't we? No. Oh well, let, well, I'm going to go back to my first thing. <laughs> God damn it, we're having bovril in this thing. Bovril, the hot drink, bovril. Mm-hmm. Cold drink, uh, Dave's choice, depending on what he brings us. Yeah, like a you know, a, <laughs> can a, a Rio, a, an umbongo or something. You a Rio, drink. yeah. Stop clenching your fist. Drink. Stop clenching your fist. Oh, so if anyone wants to make that, um, <laughs> you're insane, and. Mm. It, but you're welcome to do it. It won't kill you as long as you use good meat, good yes. frozen meat face. Um, yeah, I don't know the if best. there is any kind of edible frozen meat, but maybe just do a do a ready to eat sausage or something and mm. make yourself that. Make yourself sick. mix it, mix it all up, and send us a tweet as a video of you eating it or something if you like. Yeah, it'd be like rocket fuel, wouldn't it? That would clean yeah. you out. <laughs> it certainly would. Word. It's an enema in a in a in a protein thing. It's delicious and mm. nutritious. I mean, it does. It is, must be relatively nutritious. I suppose so. Way it's got so much in there. It <laughs> might mean that you never have to eat again, which in a yeah, way is, is pretty good. Well, wait. No, I've realised what we've just done. We've just made Huel. Oh, That's God, we have. We everything have you've Huel. listed is in Huel. <laughs> so to to recap, the vegetable was what beans. Uh, Beans. beans, yeah. Beans, uh, grape, grape. Uh, meat face, yeah. garlic. What was sauce. the pudding? Um, was it garlic pudding as well? <laughs> or ice cubes and artificial sweetener. Uh, that yeah, that's it. good. Crisps was tuck. Walk. 
Tux or Tux? Tux. Hot drink was Bovril. Cold drink was Dave's Delight. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. (laughs) Sounds really good. Testing. Yeah. Mm. The Vidiots. (laughs) All Mm. the flavors in Mm. one. Sweet, sour, salty, and terrible. Yummy. Yeah. Uh, I've got a thing here. Um, Are you guys aware of numerology? No. I think maybe, but do go on. Numerology is a sort of esoteric. In fact, let me get you a, a definition of numerology. Um, uh, numerology. So you can, so numerology essentially is um, you uh, you you turn your the letters of your name into numbers with a numerology number chart. So, in fact, it says it here. Numerology numbers are a sum value of the name numbers which vibrate various energies and expressions. The oh, digits I think from, I've heard vaguely about this. Oh, no. The digits from 1 to 8 are assigned for alphabets in the Chaldean system, whatever that means. The digit 9 <laughs> is omitted during calculation of Chaldean name n- number numerology. Just add these alphabets number numerology as mentioned below. This isn't a very... I think this might be a translated website because it's slightly strangely uh, worded at times. I but think is... even in plain English, though, it doesn't make much sense, does no, it? <laughs> no, but I mean, even just grammatically. But yeah. Um, so, I mean, I'll send you guys a numerology number number chart, but you don't need to start working yours out because um, we can do that at the end. But okay. I've, I've got some numerology here, but that's, that's what it looks like. You just... Uh, those are letters, become numbers, and then you add them all up. Um, but... I've got some numerology readings here for a few members of the VCU. And I think <gasps> you will all agree that this proves that numerology is bang on. Okay. Uh, oh, let's go. Okay. So, um, to begin with, I've got Michael Jugson. Okay. <laughs> um, the, the total number adds up to 47. Um, but then you get a whole like reading of different things on this website. It's astrologyfutureeye.com slash fortune hyphen tellers slash name hyphen numerology hyphen calculator. Excellent. So the destiny Vidious official num- com. Yes, what? Vidious official dot official dot com. <laughs> destiny number. The expression number which describes who you are and what you are or what you become. Um, so, according to Chaldean numerology, your destiny slash expression number is 11. The moon rules the number 11 slash 2. The 11 slash 2 means that Michael Jugson is highly sensitive, spiritual, and secretive. Ooh, Ooh I mean, okay. He hangs yeah. around in the dark with wide eyes, so True. that's what I think. Both and he did are- fall off the radar for years, so yeah, he's a pretty secretive man. <laughs> yes. Uh, the number 11 is a master number, and the 2 stands for a single number, whatever that means. Both are ruled by the planet Moon. <gasps> oh, the planet Moon. <laughs> Indeed. Again, he comes out at night. I think that's it. Um, yeah, yeah. Because this number is called the master number, it means you have double and special powers with this number. <laughs> An extra doubles worth of powers there. <laughs> oh my apparently. god, no. <laughs> it represents high sensitivity, spiritual, and high imagination powers. Yeah, you may yeah. become an intuitive and psychic person. Because of the moon, you are very soft towards others, and you blindly trust others, and in result, you often get treachery and hidden dangers from others. You <laughs> treachery? Have a very... Yeah? I don't believe you. Go and ask. Go and ask. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> You you have a very secretive nature, and hence people cannot understand you easily. <laughs> okay. no, number eleven represents the card lion muzzled. Apparently, um, then I'll skip over the next few bits. We've got the soul urge number, which adds up to number two for him, um, and his soul urge number being two means peacemaker. And desire for love. Mm. Oh, that's our Jugson. That certainly is. Our uh, it gives him an inner quality of peacemaking, a born friendly and cooperative nature. He wants <laughs> everything to be easygoing in any situation, and he needs a deep inner desire for love, peace, and harmony. Mm. And garlic oh. and chips. And garlic and, garlic and, and chips. chips. <laughs> and his dream number is number nine. This he- means. This means impressive as intellectual and humanitarian. 
The inner dream number nine is under the dominance of Mars. You present your first impression as intellectual, intellectual and real humanitarian. You are known for confidence, tolerance, courage with a magnetic personality and mad stunts on your pedal bike. Yes. No, just, just wow, say this that is bang end. on. Yeah. So is... <laughs> that's Michael Jugson's reading. Uh, some some interesting parallels, some that, you know, maybe are a bit more vague. Um, but I would now like to draw your attention towards the numerology reading for Art Attacks the Head. Ooh, okay. <laughs> the letters Art Attacks the Head add up to 54, which means he is courageous, humanitarian, mm. and aggressive. Very aggressive. <sighs> um, you are always ready to help others when they need you. He's always there for for Neil, of yeah, course. True, true. He is. Uh, you get everything, what you are determined to get, by taking any level of risk. Mm. You trust everyone and are often defeated by hidden enemies, although you cannot be defeated if you know your enemies. Anger and impatience is a bad part of your nature. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, his sole urge number, number five, means that he's a learner. Um, which he is. He picks up Neil's Neil's tips and tricks, but also that he has a desire for freedom. Oh no! Oh, that's sad. Oh, <laughs> Release no. the rest of the head's body. <laughs> yeah, please. Um, he has a deep curiosity to, curiosity to know, learn, and execute any work. His number tends to be adventurous with new and unusual things, but he wants change either at his home or his workplace. <laughs> <laughs> Um, his dream number is number four, which means he is impressive as disciplined and hardworking. Um, he's influenced by Uranus, and he wants. I know, <laughs> and he wants to be known as a great organizer who can plan and execute in a predictable manner. You make the first image as a very disciplined and hard worker. So that's Art Attacks the Head. And I was like, okay, well, maybe we're getting slightly closer to a, an accurate reading. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the last one I've brought for you is Dave Benson Phillips. Brilliant. Oh, there we go. Dave Benson Phillips, uh, his number, his total number is 75, but his destiny, destiny number is three. Um, he's ruled by Jupiter, apparently. And this means that Dave Benson Phillips is a creative and wow. ideal entertainer. Wow, <gasps> we. No. <laughs> the person of number three is a social person who is creative, communicative, and dramatic. Mm. Yes, the number yes, three. Yes. It represents artistic talents, charismatic personality, and cheerful behavior. (laughs) Uh, You may become a great ideal for others. You love to travel and learn the new ways of joy and happiness. I think that sounds about right. Mm -hmm. It's so Dave. Yeah. Um, You can become a good artist, writer, or publisher, or lawyer, it says. So, (laughs) okay. And basically a jack of all trades, which Dave is. Dave does shows for stuff. He does. Um, We've seen them. Yeah. His Coming soul soon, uh, Dave does legal defence for stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I will defend you in court for enough juggling balls to teach a class of 12. He teaches <laughs> juggling, he does shows, he drives a van, and now he can do law as well. So. What a man. For Nando's. <laughs> yes. His sole urge number is two, which means he's a peacemaker and has a desire for love. Aww. Aww. It gives him the inner quality of peacemaking, and he's got a born, friendly, and cooperative nature. You want everything to be easygoing in any situation, and you need a, deep, you need a deep inner desire for love, peace, and harmony. Um, but most importantly, I would say about Dave, number one, his dream number. The one means... Impressive as courageous, daring, and oh, aggressive. Oh no, Dave. Oh, Dave. No, we can't be having that. No. You tend to be confident, strong, and independent. Your dream is to be a leader among the people. You present yourself as courageous, daring, and aggressive during the first impression. I think it all fell down there at the dream number, personally. Oh, yeah. Um, but there you go. So I just wondered if you would like me to quickly do some numerology readings for you guys as well. I mean, I'm sold. I totally believe in this. And yeah. It, yeah. It, sa- it sounds so convoluted and, and and amazing and correct that it can't possibly just be made up, mm. right? Mm. It can't. <laughs> Michael Johnson, yes. your destiny number is one, which means that you are the leader, independent, creative. 
Well, mm-hmm. 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 I'm a big boy and I do like making nice things, so I'll t- I'll take that. You're an original thinker and originator of all actions, whatever Ooh. that means. <laughs> S- sometimes you become stubborn and angry when things do not happen according to your desires. Yeah, fair. Mm. You play. You may play a good role as an inventor, leader, explorer, and head of the family. Oh, <laughs> welcome to the family, son. Your soul urge number is number three, which means you've got cheerful and artistic desire. Oh, fair. There you go. It's there. You have a strong desire to express yourself in an artistic manner. You have an inner desire to be the leader in any group surrounding you. I don't know about that, if you have a desire for that. And your dream number is seven, which means impressive as secretive and knowledgeable. Um, First image is known as the stylish person who is known as a secretive but knowledgeable person too. You have the personality of an intelligent, mystic, and spiritual person. Wow, that well, sounds just I like feel Michael. Like a... That's Michael. That's Michael Johnson yeah, right there. I definitely um, have the personality of a, a mystic and spiritual person after after learning about all this. I'm for converted. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, ben, your number, your destiny number is six, which mm-hmm. means you are healer, teacher, counselor. Yeah, that's Ooh. right. That sounds like you. <laughs> that's me. You strong. You strongly trust in truth, justice, and humanity. And the American you love, way. You love luxury and harmony in life. Yeah. yeah. Number six persons may become good singers, counsellors, teachers, and they are good at art-related works. Still all, all correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, your soul number is eight, meaning you're dependable and have a desire for authority. Um, you want to be a leader in the workplace or business, and uh, you want to be... You want to secure the future and success in a financial manner. Of course, who doesn't? Yeah. And you need to be rich and a big boss in commercial <laughs> projects. <laughs> you need I, to be rich. You know what? I was just saying that to you this morning, Peter. So you know. You were, yeah. You know that's true. And your dream number, number seven, means you are impressive as secretive and knowledgeable. Everyone's fucking secretive, aren't they? Who's I know, here? yeah. Um, you're influenced by Neptune. Apparently. Great. Wet boy. Wet boy. <laughs> Wet boy. Hey. So there you go. Dave Benson Phillips, according to numerology, is creative. Uh, Michael Jugson is um, whatever it was, uh, <laughs> you know, r- ruled by the moon. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> the ben planet wants to moon. be a rich big boss. Gotta <laughs> be. The planet moon. Yes. <laughs> Gotta be. What about you, Peter? Oh, me. Yeah, I've not done me. Oh. Uh, Peter Ost in. Jotstin. <laughs> what about every um, single person listening to this now? Yeah, let's do everyone. Yeah. Um, I could actually type that in, just the letters, every single person listening to this now. <laughs> if I wanted to. Uh, my destiny number is eight, which means I'm a game changer, money maker, manager. Nice. Excellent. Um, uh, the person with the number eight may become a great business person or a leader and a game changer in the finance or politics world. Mm. Mm. Uh, I'm knowledgeable and have a desire of humanity, um, influenced by Mars. I have a deep desire to serve humanity and the world with my knowledge, uh, without expecting anything. Okay. Oh. Right? Weird. So humble. Chump. Yeah. And <laughs> dream number is number eight, which means impressive, as, as honest, hardworking, and positive. The number eight is emphasized by Saturn. You're able to draw your picture as a successful administrator or business person who is honest, hardworking, and positive. You have a great personality to attract people. Aww. Thanks. Aww. You want to be a big, sexy money boss. Yes, you need <laughs> to be rich. <laughs> Wow. Well, thanks for that, everyone. Incredible. I've, Thank uh... you, Peter. I learned so much about myself. I mean, I didn't learn anything about myself. It's all true. It's all true, and it, all it matched true. up with what you already know to be exactly. true about yourself. Oh, yeah, so you learnt nothing. Big time. Hmm. Well, fantastic. Uh, I've got one more question here. Oh. This comes from Jared at Like a Glove ninety, um, who says, "If you had to grow up with one, if you had to grow up with one celebrity who is sibling within one year of your age, so grow up together, who would it be?" I think I'm basically asking, what celebrities do you think were dicks as children? Okay, XOXO. Oh. Okay. Um, not that we want to pick the ones who are dicks, but I guess the ones we would rule out are the ones who would be dicks. Um, or, well, maybe Jared is saying that, by definition, a sibling has to be a dick as a child. You know, mm. almost that that's how you fit that 
that role. So maybe okay. we do have to pick the ones who are... Oh, the worst people. Yeah, I think maybe. James Corden would be a terrible person to grow oh, up with. He would. Yeah, so would loud and obnoxious. He's um, like, he's like, Dud- is it Dudley from Harry Potter? Yeah. Yeah, yeah then he's a big Mummy, Dudley mummy, look kid. at me, look at me. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to go to America. <laughs> hmm. Um... I'm going to be very honest. <laughs> I missed half of that because I got distracted by the, the website you're on, Peter, and I found a thing that says, ask a question to Psychic Parrot. <laughs> so, <laughs> did you? I wow. didn't because I was really like, this, you'll, when I send this image, you'll see why I was confused. I couldn't li- listen. I'm not even, oh, wow, there he is. Psychic Parrot. Bloody It's not hell. even a parrot. It looks what is haunting. That? What's up with this face? What's it's got thing? lips. What is that thing? <laughs> It's like it's like someone fed that into a machine. Yeah, that's AI art. It is AI art. Yeah, like. is AI yeah, art, that's yeah. Um, dear. I didn't even look around the website. I just googled numerology because I was sort of, I kind of aware of it and thought I'll do that for Podiats. But um, wow, what an interesting site. <laughs> God, um, sorry. Could you repeat the first bit of that question? I got yeah, most of if it. If you if you had to grow up with one celebrity who is sibling within one year of your age so grow up together who would it be i think i'm um, basically asking what celebrities do you think were dicks as children okay. so we have to pick a sort of annoying sibling um celebrity i think around our age as well i don't know if he if, if he's saying they have to be around our age or if growing up with them in this scenario irrespective of what their age is now we would be one year apart so that would be the relationship, is that you've okay. got this okay. celebrity as your sibling and there's one year between you. Okay, yeah, I get it, I get it. Um, hmm. Hmm. Who would I want to grow up with? Yeah, I don't know who I would actively want to, because you think of, like, celebrities who you like, such as, I mean, you know, I, I, I guess a go-to one that everyone loves is David Attenborough, but David hmm. Attenborough as a child would not be just talking in nature documentary commentary he'd just be a boy so um it's more about deep-rooted personality traits such as james corden is a good one um i wouldn't mind growing growing up with schwarzenegger schwarzenegger oh yeah yeah Yeah. i think he'd be a good influence like imagine me as an absolute beefcake and living with him i assume he's been doing it since a kid since he's a kid yeah yeah, I think I could. I could imagine like we could like. Whoa, that's it. If I was his brother, he wouldn't. He would have. He would have been like a double act, and we would have grown up and starred in all these films together. It wouldn't. It wouldn't have been Terminator. It would have been Terminators. Yes. Yeah. Well, would. you know, he literally did a movie called Step Brothers, right? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, so you saying I'd be Danny DeVito? No, you could just be brothers. It could just be brothers. Two jacked brothers. Isn't that called twins? Yeah, no, film? you're right. I'm thinking of the <laughs> other one. Yeah, twins, yeah. <laughs> you could be twins. You could be twins. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, I can see that. You might be onto one, Mikey, there, actually. Like, you know, having someone like um, Arnie or Sylvester Stallone or someone, because then if they were one year older than you, they could like look after you at school if you were getting picked yeah, on. No one would mess with oh, that. Oh yeah. Just call in Rocky or, you know, Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that's not really in the spirit of the scenario. What but... about but if I mean for another fun one, <clears throat> I think Pedro Pascal would be a good older brother or just brother yeah. in general. I, I, he seems like a nice dude anyway. And then I he saw does. a screenshot of a tweet recently of his that really made me like him a lot more where someone tweeted a selfie with him and said, hi, everyone, I look like Pooh and might get fired, but I've been waiting for the, for the day this man comes into my work. Hello, at Pedro Pascal. Thank you for being the literal best. And he replied, <laughs> I was so high on edibles and walking into The Incredibles too. You set me on good course with your kindness. <laughs> now, this guy's great. That's fantastic. Yeah, that was a good he shout. seems yeah. like a good brother. Wow. Big fan, big fan. That's I, I, I think you, you. I think you might have won here without even hearing Peter's. That's that's king shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's king shit. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll just pick someone strong. I'll have like Sylvester Stallone or someone. Yeah. But uh, if we're also going with the annoying sibling trope, and we have to pick someone for that, I think the ultimate one would be Mr. Blobby, right? <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> Imagine how annoying it would be living with him. No, oh, I like the family is just unable to pay the bills because once again Blobby's ran in the room and smashed everything. Smashed and... everything again. <laughs> the family can't keep up with this. Please help us control our son. 
every time you go in the bathroom, he's just left a big pink and yellow, oh, for God's <laughs> a big sake. pink and yellow blob. All of his the... clothes have to be custom tailored. It's terror. It's a nightmare. What do you yeah. think the gestation period is for a blobby? <laughs> I think they think split there's any. by like mitosis. Okay, because we have seen baby blobbies before. Right, there is a baby blobby. I, I remember that. Okay, I th- I think the blobby is made outside of the womb. It's um constructed just like a pile of goo that grows oh, into no. a blobby. Yeah. Oh no! I mean, how would you, as a parent, even begin to teach, uh, like <laughs> sexual education to a blobby? How does it work? <laughs> Uh, oh, well, God. you tell him if if well, that's the thing because like some some STDs kind of look like Mr. Blobby's skin, so it's hard to tell if he'd ever have one because he <laughs> yeah. just always looks like he's riddled. Do you ever notice <laughs> yellow lumps on your on your penis? <laughs> you, need, you must go to the doctor. Blobby, Blobby. <laughs> <laughs> no, not those ones. They're they're just your birthmarks. They're, oh. they're what make you special. Your birthmarks. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I think we did it, everyone. We made it yes. through. Uh, thank you so much for listening, everybody. There's all manner of information we're about to share with you, so don't disappear just yet. It's important information. It is important. Mikey, I believe there's a store. You're darn tooting. For the first time in a while, I can say, head to vidiotsofficial.com slash shop if you want to get serious about it, or just go on the website and click on shop and you will find a wonderful abundance of goodies. New and old mm. favourites and new favourites. We've got hats, shirts, hoodies, stickers. What more could you want? Could you Go want? check it out. Give it a little look. Yeah. Mm. Maybe buy something. Maybe buy something. That'd be great. And what we were alluding to in the opening is that we do not ship the things out ourselves. So if you have no. a problem with the merch order, you need to contact the... Uh, What's it, what are they called? I mean, it'll be explained. Oh, no, you know, no, you contact us and then we contact uh, them. Oh, okay, on your so you behalf, do reach out to us. Okay, don't be mad at us, yes. though. We don't do the merch, but we will do our best to help you with the people who do the merch for us. Yes. Okay, that's it. Yes. There's a contact we, we, form on we, the website. Um, it. Fantastic. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all.com forward slash videos official. The Discord is vidiotsofficial.com forward slash Discord if you want to go there and hang out. And thank you to Tommy and Fleckers for modding us over there. Uh, And of course, there's twitch.tv forward slash vidiotsofficial. We just did the reunion stream. And actually, I believe, for the first time in quite a while, my friend Ben's coming to visit this coming weekend at the time of the release of this podcast. And I think we're going to do a stream on Saturday. So if you want to come along and raise a little bit of extra money, I know you've just done it. But if you want to come along and drink and play, watch some video plays and um, play the games and the streams and the drinking, then go, go do that. Maybe twitch.tv forward slash videots official. Uh, if you want to donate and join Pod Squad, three pounds or more to get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the show. That's podiots.com. Or just go to the main website and there's a button for it. It's all there. It's all on the website. It's amazing. Uh, and the old link still works if you're worried yes. that you've maybe already used that link or something. It's just a redirect. It does, but yes, podiots.com. Does all work. Uh, Mikey, kick us off. Oh, God, I completely Ooh. forgot this is what we did. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, I, oh god, there's so many video <laughs> servers in Discord. That's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. There we you got go. It. Billy Ray's Five Forgotten Kids, Stephen Scordes. I'm going to do it the right way around this time as a treat. Uh, the very generous, like a go- like a glove. Lol, JK. I wasn't really generous. Okay, this is now an expensive and bad joke. Fuck, I did them all backwards. Thank you. Merry Lord Brohohohortovich. Freddy Weber doing... Caroline keeps me in her loft. You know, it's all about Dakum and Donak 07. Ooh. Thank you all. Peter, do you want to do also, the, the additional Elon as well with yours? So yes, I will do. Um, so th- uh, thank you also to Mikey's sad, soiled body bits. Oh. Big Joe Rivers, who is very generous. Thank you. Veronica Minge Gurgle. Lick my sneaky Finch 42 titties. Mr. Blobby's Hot Nobby. Shit is beans time. The plop story was a bit much. Mikey's landlord here. Why? Unleash the beans. The gimp inside my attic. And then in the correct order, 
We've got Elon buys Podiots, Elon reinstates memory cards, Elon bankrupts Podiots. Oh, um, and I should also say Unleash the Beans was very generous. Thank you, Unleash the Thank Beans. Thank you very much. And finally, we've got Ben out of 10, a bit of an abrasive one, 2nd December Coles orgy, Amy the Wicks, lonely and trans at Xmas, Ben Potter is Cooper Cup, Mr. Macca, anxious millennial cowboy, Mr. Street View at Meat Facery, Lewis Puis is Jewish, Lewis Puis is Jewish, and Osama bin Ladas. There we are. That is your nice. pod squad for this week. Three pounds or more, podiots.com. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, Peter, mm. what's out on Vidiots four years ago this week? Well, I believe I believe I overshot last oh. time, so I may have already said last time, worst games ever, The Legend of Spyro, The Eternal Night. Mm. Um, Vidiots live Twitch stream, Fallout 76 disaster. Vidiots live Twitch stream, Dark Souls remastered, hashtag finale. Mm. Mm. Uh, the Red Dead Redemption 2 horse cliff diving challenge, which my mum didn't like. Aww. Podiots episode 22, Quacker Dak. Uh, Vidiots live Twitch stream, Spyro Reignited trilogy number one. I definitely overshot on, on a lot of these, but anyway. <laughs> um, it's the meme, see? Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Mm. Uh, we've also got Worst Games Ever, Biker Mice from Mars. The Fallout 76 Power Armor Edition unboxing. Oh, yeah. Vidiot's oh. live Twitch stream, Mikey's Drawing Things. Um, that's a great thumbnail, actually. Um, it's got uh, Grimace on it with a big <laughs> bottom. Oh, um, sexy. Bo- Vidiot's episode 23, The Terror Graph. Um, Merry Christmas, Johnny, which is an unlisted personal message Merry video. Christmas, Merry Johnny. Christmas, Johnny. Hope you're doing Merry well. Merry Christmas. Yeah. It's been viewed 10 times. Um, and Vidiot's live Twitch stream Spyro Reignited Trilogy number two, which I think, yes, brings us up to release date of this podcast. Excellent stuff. Mikey, where are you on the internet? At Parrot Boy on Twitter is the best place to keep up with all my business. Go check it out. It's got pictures on it. <laughs> <It's good. laughs> sure has, so I'm man. selling it. Yeah, it's definitely got pictures. Oh, the last thing I posted on there was just a minute of back-to-back farts. So enjoy. Yeah, yeah, you go, sure yeah. did. Go I breathe that, that in. That was great. Breathe that in. <laughs> <laughs> and Peter, where are we on the internet? We are at Team Triple Jump, where we've just opened loads of tat, although that won't actually be going on the channel for a few weeks yet. But go and get over there and subscribe if you're not already yeah. and be prepared for loads of tat. Um, and loads of other things on there too, but it's all gaming-related. Um, and we're also individually on social media at that Peter Austin on Twitter and Hive um, and Instagram, and also at confused underscore dude on Twitter and at confused dude no underscore on Hive. Yes, absolutely. Uh, finally, oh, my voice is going. Why not leave us a five star oh. review on your platform of choice? It helps something to do with Al Gore's rhythms. Do we have a final question before we fuck off? Ooh. I don't know. Hmm. 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 What was the fruit thing? Scot Scottish yeah. fruit. Oh, Scottish fruit. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. What yeah. Decipher the fruit thing for Let us. No. Uh, is there any fruit-related vidiots, Mimi? Scottish fruit. What's a man? Scottish fruit. <laughs> Scottish. Scottish, Scottish fruit. fruit. Maybe. Cool. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Listening, that too. We'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Idiotsofficial.com. Idiotsofficial.com.